Hi, Lily Mothers here and welcome back to Crack and Crafting. Today I have another project for you. Recently, one of my lovely daughters bought me some lovely Chanel makeup and it came in this most beautiful gift bag. And of course, being the typical crafter, I fell in love with the bag just as much as the contents. So I thought I just have to have a go at that, you know, as you do. So I have come up with a smaller version of it I want to say smaller I the reason for that was because I wanted to make it with um, a4 cardstock uh, UK a4 cardstock so this is the size that that came out to you could of course make it bigger by using 12 by 12 cardstock now the important thing is it's a fold flat bag so you can make multiple versions of these and put them away uh, store them away for future use that's always very useful but um, this is relatively simple to make and um, you can change it up any which way you want but I just know you're going to love it now um, let me just remind myself the bag dimensions are the finished measurements are 21 centimeters by 12.5 centimeters by 4.6 centimeters the inside section here has a maximum height at 10 centimeters and at the lowest point in the very middle it's 7.5 centimeters let me open this up and show you actually the inside how clever is that see how it folds flat it's not a beautiful opening but I say to here it's 10 centimeters but to this point in the, the lowest section it's 7.5 centimeters so let's get on with making the bag Okay, now you take the A4 piece of cardstock or DSP that you want to see in the outside of the bag and place it long side up in the Stampin' Trimmer and very simply score it at 12.5 centimetres on each side, it's the easiest way to do it. Turn it over and 12.5 centimetres again. So I'll give you the two sides of the bags and that will be the bottom. Now I turn it and I score it then at half a centimetre, which actually is the edge, the grey edge of this piece of the trimmer, half a centimetre on all four sides. This helps to act as a guide when you're placing the inner section, when you're adhering it to the inside of the bag. It's also decorative. If you wanted to do like my last bag, you could color those outside edges in or just leave the score lines. And again, it makes great guidelines to place the inside of the bag or even if you're decorating the outside, it's all very helpful. Now, um, to make the section for the ribbon, cuts for the ribbon. Again you position the cardstock long side up and you position it to be 1.5 centimeters in. So you're going to here and bring your cutting blade which is here to 10 centimeters down which would be about here. This ribbon is slightly longer than my or slightly broader than my last one so I'm going to take it back a couple of millimeters to 9.8 and bring it down to 11.2, where my last one I simply cut from 10 centimeters to 11, but I need this to be slightly wider. So turn it and repeat, 1.5 centimeters in, down 10 centimeters, take it back a couple to about 9.8 and down to 11.2. As to allow for a 1.5 centimeter ribbon. Now let me move this. So here I've got a beautiful, lovely lipstick ribbon from the new Spring Summer catalogue. I will add all detail to this on my blog. So if you're watching this on YouTube, do nip over to my blog. You will get much, much more detail there. Uh, the link for the blog will be just underneath this video. And simply click on that and it'll take you straight over. What I'm gonna use is this paper piercing tool and just open that up a little bit so that I can get the ribbon. So 
turn it over. I'm going to slip the ribbon through that slit, pull it through, and I've just marked with pencil here in about 4.5 centimeters. That is as far as I need the ribbon to go down, and a little piece of tear and tape will hold it in place until everything is pulled together. So there we go and it's as simple as that. So that's the ribbon attached both ends as I obviously had done that before I came back to camera both ends of the bag so this is the stage that I would decorate if you're going to decorate the outside of it at all okay as I want to decorate the outside I'm using this beautiful um, designer series paper from the new spring summer catalogue it's called all my love it's an absolute stunner you've got to check it out now this piece, I've cut two pieces as you see, 20 centimetres by 11.5 centimetres and that, that allows half a centimetre border around the outside. So I'm a bit rubbish with adhes adhesive, uh, tape adhesive so I need a little bit of wriggle time when I'm putting things down because I never put them down straight. I'm pretty useless. I don't have a straight eye on my head. So I'm using the Tumble Multi-Purpose Liquid Glue, which obviously stamping up cells, thankfully, because I love it so much. And here, as I said, I'm using those score lines that we put on previously as a guide to place my designer series paper down on top. It's as simple as that. And now on this one, I have put some delicate, subtle faux stitching on the side. So I'm using white gel pen and a metal ruler. If I could use a sewing machine, I would do so, but I'm totally rubbish. I couldn't sew to save my life. So I do love this effect though. If you wanted it, be not quite so subtle you could of course use crumb cake or lovely lipstick uh, stamp and write markers to do this job Okay, here we have the finished outside of the bag. Isn't that so pretty? All that remains to put on the outside, if you wish, is, is some kind of die cut sentiment or decoration. So now to get working on the remainder of the inside, get rid of that a second and bring over our stamp and trimmer again. I love this because it scores and trims both at the same time. So for the inside of the bag, I'm using a contrasting color. Ideally, I would use the lovely lipstick cardstock because it coordinates with the designer series paper. Unfortunately, I've run out of the lovely lipstick, so I've called upon a retired piece of cardstock. This is the rose red, and it actually does complement quite well the designer series paper. So what we're gonna do, short side up, that's the 21 centimeter side, we're gonna cut in half. So at 10.5 centimetres, simply cut it in two. And what we're going to do now, you'll, you'll do on both these pieces. So I'll put one piece to the side. Now, so we're going to score at the, the longest edge here, uh, on one side only, at half a centimetre. So as I said earlier, that's just the, the edge of the grey cutting mat there so we're going to score that and we'll call that the lengthways score line for the purpose of the tutorial so measure and mark with a pencil the unscored side so we'll turn it long ways up 
and get a pencil. This is the way I do it. I find this easiest. So we mark the unscored side at five centimeters. So I line it up to the five centimeter mark. I simply mark it there. And then at 14.12 centimeters, mark it there. And I'm going to turn it because I want to do the same at the other end. I hope you, sorry, I had to turn it there so you could see it. So again, we're going to five centimeters. Let's move that out of the way and 14.14142 centimeters and mark that there so that's marked both sides five centimeters 14.2 then five centimeters and 14.2 centimeters at both sides so um let me see on the scored side, so that's the side that you've done your half centimetre score, you simply mark at 12.5 centimetres. And again, I'll turn that so you can see the other end. At 12.5 centimetres. So it's marked evenly on both sides. Now we're going to do some score work to create the inside of the box. Okay, to do the scoring on the inside, I find it easiest to use the paper piercing mat, the Stampin' Up! paper piercing mat and a good old fashioned metal ruler. Now the score lines or the, the the pencil marks you've made are all here so i start with the unscored side up first and i go to the first mark which is the four point no it's not it's the five centimeter mark and you come down to this one here and you're going to make what i call a broken w score so you're scoring. Actually, I should move it over slightly because you're scoring down to your previous score line, which is here. So you're lining it up there. Here's your other pencil mark. So you line up with the end of that score line and go to the top of that pencil mark. Again, only taking it to the edge of the, the original score line. So you've got the gap in the middle here, and this is where your broken W comes in. You line that up there, then to your other pencil mark here. I will attach a diagram for you to make that a little clearer. And again, starting from here, up to that last pencil mark. And that's your broken W score line. So you do that on both of them. And at this point you can take off with a, a sand eraser, remove those pencil marks. Okay, so this is the other half of that half A4 that we cut and scored. Now I'll just quickly bring in the stamp and trimmer again because we'll need to trim off at this stage. You put the, the card long side up obviously and trim off half centimeter. Again, that's just to the end of that gray line. Turn. 90 degrees and half centimeter again. This is the easiest, handiest way to do it. Now, let's remove that. So this is where the inside of the bag starts to take shape. At this stage, we're going to cut a little wedge in 
here to this middle section. If you can see these two score lines here, we're just cutting up to that first half centimeter score line, just like that, and removing those little pieces. So this is going to, I'm gonna turn it over and fold those tabs in. So that half centimeter score line was to create these little tabs for sticking down. Just gonna use a bone folder quickly to fold those. So the secret then of how this works, it's a bit messy there, is this middle section here, you fold away from that, like that, to create that shape there. And then the two outside score lines you're folding towards you, just like that. Hope you can see that, hope that wasn't off camera. And I'm just gonna burnish those a little bit with my bone folder. Make sure they're nice and sharp. So then when that's folded up into position within the bag, it will be kind of that shape there. So now it's time to start putting it all together. Okay, now to stick the, the inside of the bag in. As you can see, I've already done one side. So in preparation for this side, I've used a piece of tearing tape and run it across here. The score lines here, as I said earlier, this is where it really helps. A separate piece of tearing tape, and then I'm going to use or apply the final piece of tearing tape along this score line up to that score line. There we go. Right, this is inside, the second half of the inside of the bag, and I've got my little tabs turned backwards. So this section is the first we'll concentrate on, and you're gonna line it up with this little piece here. So I'm gonna line it there. Okay. And that's where it's gonna sit. So let me take this backing off and actually stick it down. So again, let's line it up between the two score lines. Oops, let me just check that. Sorry, I slipped. That line's up there. Okay, and then this side here, we'll take the backing paper off. Just lay it flat. And allow it to go in and this side. Likewise, I've actually used the wrong tape in this. I just see I've made that very, very thick. I've lifted the wrong one, but anyway, it's fine. I should have used this thinner one. As you can see, I've got two, and I used this one by mistake. It should have been this one. Anyhow, that's that section, and I'm going to put where's the edge of this? A little bit of tape on the outside of each side here, and again on this one. Here we go. You can see it sits within those little score lines that I showed you earlier. So let's, oh my goodness. I am all thumbs at the best of times, honestly. There we go. The backing off, simply bring that over, line that up and that should be it. Mine's actually not perfect there. Oh, there we go. And then when you bring the bag together, it sits, I 
of it. Actually, I've missed one piece. I should have put a little bit of adhesive in here. So I'll just do that now. And a little bit in here also. There we go. I can take that excess adhesive out. Okay, so this is the inside of the bag finished. Isn't that just a beautiful fold? And the ribbon. Simply tie your ribbon up as usual. I'm rubbish with ribbons. the sides to fit and a die cut a little sentiment celebrate sentiment for the front of the card so isn't that just lovely let me zoom out a little bit for you so you can see that a little bit clearer isn't that just beautiful well I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial make sure to check out the important details just below the blog here there's loads more information for you and um, thanks for joining me today and I'll see you soon bye for now